In this video, we're gonna talk about the cost of living in Key West. This is a question that comes up a lot. Is it expensive to live in Key West? How much does it cost for groceries? How much does it cost to buy a house? That's what we're gonna cover in this video. Hey, welcome to the Key West Living Channel. My name is Tyler Sheff and I'm a realtor with Future Home Realty. And I wanna to talk today about cost of living. How much does it cost to live in America's favorite paradise? Well, it's a popular question. It's one I had myself before I packed up, moved my family to Key West a while back. Let's start out talking about rent because a lot of people before they buy in Key West, they come to Key West and they rent an apartment for a period of time. And I frankly don't think that's a bad idea for a lot of folks because it helps you kind of get an idea of where you want to be on the island, get an idea of what type of amenities make sense to you. And for those that want to rent before they want to buy, or if you want to be a landlord, let's say you're going to buy a place that has an in-law suite or you want to do a, a second home that maybe you'll do a short-term rental on, or maybe you're just not ready to come down to Key West and you want to get a place that you can rent out for a period of time, let it buy down uh, some of your mortgage and then move into it later. Let's start there with single family or with single family homes and apartments. Now I will say the numbers I'm about to give you have wild fluctuations and unfortunately I can't avoid that because here in Key West, it's a very diverse community. You've got neighborhoods such as Old Town, Casa Marina, Bahama Village, Newtown, Uptown, The Meadows. Each one of these has a different appeal based on the type of person that's gonna be moving in there. That's gonna fluctuate the rent amounts. For example, if you want a yard, you may wanna be in Newtown or maybe over in Casa Marina. And for you, it's worth paying more for a yard, but for somebody where having a yard doesn't really matter to them, or maybe they don't wanna cut grass, then maybe Maybe they would want to live over in Old Town, where I assure you, there are very few yards. The Meadows is kind of a happy medium. It's, it's an area that borders Old Town that has some yard, more yard than Old Town, but less yard than the Casa Marina district. And in future videos, I'm going to cover the individual neighborhoods, what their characteristics are. Let's keep in mind, though, that Key West is an island that is only two miles by four miles. So the, although it's very diverse, it's also very small. In fact, in Key West, there is about 10,000 houses. And as of this recording in July, or I'm sorry, August, I don't know what day it is, August or what month it is, August of 2021, there's about 24,000 people in Key West as reported to the U.S. Census Bureau. Now, maybe there's a couple people hiding in a closet somewhere, who knows, hiding under a mattress, don't know where they are, but they're not on the census. And that, of course, does not allow for or account for our tourism trade, which is a big part of Key West. So with that, let's jump into the rents. Starting with the rents, one of the most popular things single folks do or people just move into the island to try to get established is sometimes they will rent a room in an existing rental property. What does that mean? Well, believe it or not, a lot of these homes have been converted from two bedroom to three bedroom homes over the years. And over in Newtown and areas like Casa Marina, there are a lot of three bedroom homes. And what people will do is they will, one person will rent a three bedroom home and then they will rent out the individual rooms that they're not using. Let's say for example, I'm a single guy, which I'm not, and I wanted to move to Key West and save a little money. So what I might do is I'll rent a three bedroom house. I'll bring two friends with me. We will each rent out a bedroom. The three of our rents together, one for each bedroom, makes a three bedroom house affordable. Obviously a lot of folks can't afford a three bedroom house all on their own. That's where this whole rental roommate thing comes in. With that said, you can expect to pay as of July or in August 2021 between a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars per bedroom in most of your three bedroom homes. Now, if this is the big, you know, mega mansion, the prices may change, but this is for your average run of the mill, nice home, maybe has a pool, nice landscaping, a place to park, that type of thing. You can expect to pay between a thousand to fifteen hundred. Obviously, the fifteen hundred dollar homes have a lot more to offer than thousand dollar rooms, and so just keep all that in mind. An efficiency, which is basically a, an apartment that doesn't have a separate bedroom. An efficiency has a, a toilet and a shower usually, a small little kitchenette, maybe a, a hot plate or something like that. For an efficiency, you can expect to pay somewhere between $1,500 and $1,800. And before we go any further, I just wanna say that there are wild fluctuations. There are cases that you can get an efficiency for less than $1,500, although rare. There are also cases where an efficiency might be significantly higher, $2,500. It all depends on where it is, 
the amenities that it offers, and essentially how nice it is. That makes a big difference too. The next thing is a one bedroom. A one bedroom generally runs between 1,800 and 2,500 in most of the neighborhoods here in Key West. That's your, your range. A two bedroom is between 2,500 and 3,500. And then a, a three bedroom is between 3,500 and I've seen them as high as four or 5,000 a month. Now, if you're listening to four or 5,000 a month for a three bedroom house, you might be thinking that's crazy, but that's not in crazy if you are going to live in it, let's say seasonally. What a lot of people do is they will buy a home in Key West. That's the second home. They'll spend a couple months down here during the winter when it's snowing up in New York or wherever you're from up north, and they'll rent it out to a long-term tenant for the rest of the year. In that case, four, five, six, eight, ten thousand dollars a month during the summer is not out of line. Uh, it's very, very common to see those around the island. Keep in mind, Key West is a tourist destination. So there are all kinds of folks elsewhere in the world where the only time they can come to Key West is in the dead of summer. Now, a lot of people don't necessarily enjoy Key West in the dead of summer because it's hot. But that said, that doesn't mean that applies to everybody. There's lots of people that love to come to Key West. We moved to Key West in the dead of summer and because we're full-time residents, year-round residents here in Key West. So for a lot of people, that makes an absolute lot of sense. Next, let's talk about groceries. Groceries are my favorite thing. As you can tell, I'm a guy that likes to eat. One of the reasons I love Key West because there's so much diversity in food and so much going on here. Before we get too far into groceries, let me cover one thing about where you buy your groceries. There are two main grocery store chains on the market. One of them is Publix. If you live in Florida or you've ever been to Florida before, chances are you've probably seen a Publix. Publix are all over the state of Florida. They're also in other areas like Tennessee, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. Some You'll see them also in Alabama. Publix is a big grocery store chain. There is currently, as of August 2021, there are two Publix locations on the island. For whatever reason, they are only a few blocks apart. So they are on the north end of the island, both of the Publix locations. There's also Fosto's. Fosto's is a local grocer. They've been in business for a very long time. Fosto's Key West has been around since 1926. This is your old time grocer. It's a great place to shop. They've got amazing produce, great meats. It does admittedly cost a little bit more than it would at Publix. I'm sure that's because they're a smaller grocer. They can't buy at the same volume that Publix does. But if you like a small hometown grocer, then you'll probably enjoy Fosto's. Now, if you're a Parrot Head or a big Jimmy Buffett fan, Fosto's is mentioned in Jimmy Buffett's songs. He talks about buying his chocolate milk at Fosto's. He used to live over on Caroline Street uh, and other, other places here on the island, Anna Street and several other places. And he wanted, Fosto's is one of the places that he used to get his grocery shopping. At current, there are two Fosto's locations on the island. Uh, one of them is over by Duval Street, a couple blocks from me, which is my favorite one. And there's another one over by White Street, uh, which is the main runs from ocean to ocean, White Street does, similar to Duval Street. With that, let's jump into the price of groceries. And I apologize, I did not go to Fosto's and, and get pricing from them, but I will give you pricing for Publix. All right, well, at this point, let's jump into pricing. And the pricing I'm gonna give you is for Publix grocery, which is on the north end of the island. Publix, a gallon of milk right now is uh, $4.65 a gallon. Uh, and eggs is two dollars and nine cents a gallon so you might be hearing those figures and going that's crazy expensive or wow that's cheap or that's the same price i pay at home what you'll find on the island of key west is that it might this is my opinion uh, groceries really aren't as expensive as people would like you to believe now things like uh, beef and, and and meats and exotic foods and things like that yeah they're gonna pay more but for your run-of-the-mill milk egg cheeses that type of thing in my opinion, I'm originally from the Tampa, Florida or Tarpon Springs, Florida area. In Tarpon Springs, our grocery prices are pretty similar to what they are in Key West. Believe it or not, seafood, even though it's one of the main things that's sourced right here in Key West, seafood for whatever, expensive, or for whatever reason is more expensive. Maybe that has to do with the fish markets and the docks here in Key West. They got to pay a premium for that real estate. I don't know why that is, but I know that I can get seafood significantly cheaper back in Tarpon Springs or back in the Tampa, Clearwater area. So that is the one thing that definitely food-wise that's much more expensive in Key West. West. So Fosto's is a little bit more money for groceries, as I had said a minute ago, but I think that you'll enjoy, if you go to Fosto's, number one, you'll enjoy the quality of the produce. It's very high quality produce. It's also very high quality meats. You'll also get a very eclectic collection of produce. What do I mean by eclectic? Well, there's all kinds of vegetables that are not common or traditional and they change it up a lot. Yes, you've got your green peppers, your red peppers, your onions, your tomatoes, your bananas, all that good stuff, but they've got all kinds of other stuff. They've got guava, they've got all all kinds of different things, mangoes, and a lot of stuff that you can't find in public. 
or if it is at Publix, it's very rare. So a trip to Fosto's is definitely a treat. It's where I do the majority of my grocery shopping. There's a few things that Fosto's doesn't have in stock or doesn't carry that Publix does. And in that case, I'll go to Publix. One of them, I like uh, cranberry juice with lemonade mixed in. It's one of my favorite non-alcoholic drinks. And they don't sell that at Fosto's, but they do sell it at Publix. So I go to Publix for that type of stuff. As far as home appreciation, Key West is a great market to buy in. If you think of a hockey stick, a lot of markets in the United States are shaped like a hockey stick. They stay down, they stay down, and then they, they rock it up. And then if there's market fluctuations, market shifts, they crash like a big stone. Well, Key West is very different. Key West has a slow but steady appreciation year over year. Last year, the home appreciation in Key West was around 12%. The average rate of appreciation in Key West hovers around the 7% mark. Uh, that is a year over year number. So if you take a 10 year span and you look at the average home appreciation in Key West, it hovers around 7%. So if you buy a home in Key West and let's say the housing market crashes, what you'll find is that Key West won't crash to the same likes of other areas. Like where I'm from in Tampa, people lost as much as 40, 50% of their home values when the market crashed, provided they sold. That Key West, that was not the case. Key West maintained its home values. They didn't go up at that same pace that they normally would, but they also didn't go down, and that's a good thing. So Key West is a market that will actually help you maintain your equity and help you build your equity over time. Will it hockey stick and go crazy? I doubt it. It hasn't for a very long time. I've looked at Key West property values for 30 years now, and I've seen the same steady, slow, gradual climb. That's a good thing when it comes to cost of living. That means if you can afford to live here now, likely you'll be able to afford to live here forever, provided you're income situation doesn't change. It's a very stable environment, a great community to take part in, and an amazing community for investment. So you might be wondering how many people live in Key West. Around 24,000 is the answer. There is around 13,000 housing units available here in Key West. So that's about average of two people per household overall. Obviously that changes. There are small families, there are no families, there are all kinds of things in between but the average list price of a home, and this is a, a single family home here in Key West, list price as of July 2021 is about $1.2 million. And I know for some of you that might be sticker shock, for others that may seem incredibly cheap. I know friends of mine that live in Los Angeles, $1.2 million would get them a cracker shack, something that's not even habitable for $1.2 million in a lot of neighborhoods. In Key West, that's the average. That means a lot of, a lot of many houses will sell for more, other houses will sell for less, Condos, you'll see condos hovering, starting around the $600,000 mark for condominiums. And condos can pretty quickly get up as much as 1 million or even more over 1 million pretty quickly. One interesting thing they've done here in Key West, is, which I don't see elsewhere in the country as much, is they've taken huge Victorian mansions and they've changed the configurations inside to make them condominiums. They turn out gorgeous. So you get the feel and the appeal of that old world charm, that Victorian craftsmanship, hardwood floors. A lot of times you get wood walls, beautiful stairways and banisters. You're gonna get all of that. The things that are usually not even available in a condominium in most parts of the country, you can get that at condominium prices. Now those do, as far as condominiums go, those type of condominium conversions generally bring a higher price per square foot than your traditional uh, brick and mortar and your concrete 1960s build condominiums. You can get that type of condominium much cheaper than you can the old world charm stuff. So it really depends on what you like and uh, what best suits your needs and what area you wanna live in. As it stands in Key West, people ask me a lot, is the market hot? Is it too hot to buy? Are people fighting over houses? And I'm gonna say that although inventory is low, there's about two and a half months worth of inventory. There's about 176 active listings on the market right now. What does that tell you? Well, on a small island that's only two miles by four miles, you have 176 choices of a place to live. Obviously the price, chip, price points fluctuate up and down depending on where you are, but I still feel there's plenty of inventory for someone coming to the island, especially if it's your first time here and you're trying to get your feet wet, get into something, buy something that you like, that's in the, in the right place, has the amenities, and you sit on it for a couple of years and you can pretty much bet that your appreciation will just keep slowly climbing up and climbing up. So when you decide that you wanna buy something different, maybe you want a bigger place, or maybe you wanna downsize, you can do that here in Key West very easily. No matter what's going on elsewhere in the country, 
you could do that in Key West and still walk away with equity, equity that you can either cash out or you can roll that into your next property. So there's that opportunity pretty much always exists exist here in Key West. Let's talk about power and water, right? Everybody needs power and water. Water is brought to us from the mainland. Water comes from Miami through the Florida Keys Aqueduct. I would say the water bills here in Key West are similar than what, the, than what they are in Tampa. I believe we pay about 7% more for water here in Key West than we did back in Tampa. That's my calculations. Um, there is a gallon usage chart. You can go to the Florida Keys Aqueduct Authority and it will tell you what your cost per thousand gallons is based on your usage. Obviously the usage comes down to how many sinks and toilets and whatnot you have in your home. That's gonna dictate your usage. But as you see, the more you use, the higher the rate for the water is. And that's just the way it is. And that's pretty much the way it is anywhere in the country. As far as an electric bill, electric here in Key West, for whatever reason, is actually cheaper than the national average. The national average electric bill is $167 a month. In Key West, it's $162 a month. We use air conditioning all summer long, but in the fall, it's pretty mild here. The average temperatures are in the 70s, so a lot of people turn off their air conditioner. We've always got a nice gentle breeze rolling through Key West, so the weather here in the wintertime is absolutely gorgeous. While it's snowing everywhere else, you're saving money not going out the window by paying a huge power bill because you're not running an air conditioner and you're never running heat in Key West. Very rarely do you run heat in Key West, and it's actually never gotten below freezing in Key West in recorded history. So if, you, if you're tired of the snow and the sleet, and you're tired of paying those heat oil bills, maybe Key West makes sense for you. Boat storage and dockage in Key West is a little bit more pricey than what you'll find out everywhere else in the country. Obviously, if you go to a place like a yacht club, you're gonna pay a premium, but if you go to City Marina or you go to Garrison Bite uh, Marina, you're gonna have decent rates. I have a small boat, it's under 20 foot. I pay just under $400 a month to have high and dry storage. I find that comparable with what I was paying back in Tarpon Springs, Florida. Now, here's the thing, I have to pay to park my trailer my trailer is over in Stock Island, which is an, a, one island away. That cost me an additional $75. I know that I could get trailer storage for closer to $35 to $50 back in Tarpon Springs. So just keep that in mind when you're paying to pay, paying to store things like boat trailers and RVs and stuff like that. Parking and space down here in the Keys is at a premium. You know, with a marina, they can stack six, seven boats up on one after the other in a rack, but in a trailer, they don't do that. The boat trailer or an RV. So if you've got those type of things, consider or taking them off the island chain, maybe renting a space down our homestead if you're not gonna use your trailer a lot, that's an option. Uh, for me, I'm gonna be taking my trailer. We just bought a boat not too long ago. We're gonna be taking the trailer up to some property we have up in Cedar Key, Florida, and parking it there because I've got a whole bunch of acreage sitting in Central Florida, why not use it, right? Doesn't cost me anything to park my thing there. Parking in general, if you're a resident of the city of Key West, if you're either renting and you have a lease or you're on the deed of a property in Key West, you'll qualify for what they call a resident parking permit. That will cost you $20 for the year to get a little sticker that goes up in your windshield and tells people that you are a Key West resident. And that allows you to park in the residential parking spots. Residential parking spots right there is where you got the white line and it says residential parking on the side of the road. Those are primarily found in Old Town where the largest concentration of people are and where the biggest shortage of parking is. Outside of, of Old Town, you'll still see residential parking spaces, but not as many because there's not as much of a crunch for parking outside of Old Town. As far as paying to park, you can park at the city garage. They have a parking garage at the city. It runs about $200 a month to park there. The nice thing is it is shaded. There's an elevator. You're high and dry. It's, it's a great place to park if you're willing to make the investment. You can rent a parking space at a lot of local businesses that have extra parking spaces. If you want, that'll cost you on the average of between $100 and $125 a month for a parking space to park on somebody else's property. Maybe you've got a second car um, and you need a place to park it, you can do that as well. What you will find in Key West, and most people agree with me in this case, is that you really don't need a car in Key West very often. For example, we've got a Jeep Wrangler. We it sits outside, we drive it maybe once a month. Uh, sometimes if I go to the grocery, I'm gonna get a lot of stuff, then maybe I'll use the, the Jeep for that. I'm going to a medical appointment in the summertime and I don't wanna get all sweaty before I go see the doctor, then I'll take the Jeep because I can ride in air conditioning. But otherwise we ride our bikes everywhere. We've got e-bikes and a little pull behind trailer and I get my groceries that way and it makes it real easy. Also, I don't ever have to worry about a place to park and a bike 
because Key West has done a great job of being a bike friendly town. There are tons of places to bike, park your bike. You're never gonna have to worry about uh, paying to park your bike ever, ever, ever. Same thing goes with a scooter. There's a gas scooter that if you that's your thing, uh, you can park, you can get your gas scooters parked just about anywhere in Key West. They've got special parking for scooters, just like they do for bikes. Those two parking things are different, uh, but scooter parking doesn't cost you anything. If you have a car and you want to go downtown or down to Duval Street, you're going to pretty much pay to park anywhere in there. Generally, it costs about $4 per hour to park your car in Key West once you're outside of the residential areas. If like, for example, if you're going to go down to Duval Street and party, you want to leave your car, take your car down there, you can bank on paying $4 an hour or 40 bucks a day to park your car downtown. So what a lot of people do is they will use the, the Duval Loop which means you park just off of Duval Street in maybe a free or a cheaper parking and then ride the, the loop, which is the public transportation bus that takes you around Duval Street and down Whitehead, down to the southernmost point, all the way around the loop. And I'm gonna do a video on that, so look at my playlist. You'll see a video about Duval Loop and where it goes coming up soon if, if, if I don't have it out by the time you've watched this. Lastly, let's talk about earning money, making money, greenbacks, simoleons, benjamins. How do you make money in Key West? Well, the same way you make money anywhere else, right? Either build a, start a business and build a business or you get a job. In the service and labor industry, you can expect to make somewhere between $15 to $25 an hour. What you're doing and the type of job you do really depends on what that is. I will say jobs with working with the city and the county generally do not pay as much as working in the private sector. If let's say, for example, you're the guy that drives the boat that pumps out the sewage from the boats out in the bay. That guy, believe it or not, only makes $18 an hour. But the guy driving a tour boat, is making 50 bucks an hour. Big difference in pay, whether you're working for a civilian or you're working for the government. So uh, the government has a tough time filling their positions because they don't pay as much. Civilian companies find it a lot easier to fill their positions because they can be more flexible on pay and benefits and things like that. If you're in the food service industry, you're bartender, waiter, wait staff, that type of thing. Maybe you're working in the kitchen, you're a sous chef. You can expect to make between 20 to $50 an hour. The ads I see on Facebook for available jobs, I haven't seen one in a long time that's paid less than $20 an hour. And frankly, when they do offer 20, less than $20 an hour on the rare case, people kind of go crazy on Facebook and call them cheap and tight wads and whatnot. So they usually wind up boosting their rates up and making their, their pay much higher. Again, you go work at some place like the airport, you're probably gonna pay get paid a little bit less because that's more of a big business type of place. You're dealing with corporate America at the airport. You're not dealing with mom and pop. So your hourly wage will be less. We now live in a gig economy. A big number of Americans now in the last couple of years have gravitated to working from home. I work from home, obviously. There is no better place on the planet, in my opinion, to work from home than in Key West. I can wake up in the morning, it's nice, it's beautiful out, the weather's great, I can go for a swim in the Atlantic Ocean, or I just make a left out of my driveway, and in three to five minutes, I'm at the Gulf of Mexico, and I make take a swim in the Gulf of Mexico, I can do a little fishing when the sun comes up, come home, take a shower, get dressed for work, come here, make these nice videos, and talk to you people, go show a house or two, maybe do some contracts, I can kick off at lunch, go down to Duval Street if I want, have a, a, a cocktail, have a beer, take a nap, go find a shade tree to hang out. It's just, it's literally paradise living. It's the best office on the whole planet. And if you watch more of my videos, you'll see that sometimes my videos are at the beach. I'm at different places in Key West. That's by design, guys. That is my every day. And when you live in a beautiful town like Key West, you have the option to do that. The beach, Fort Zachary Taylor State Park, is literally a five minute ride on my bike from my house. The Gulf of Mexico is four minutes behind me. The Atlantic Ocean is four minutes in front of me down the road. It's real simple to get around. It's real easy. I don't have to worry about traffic and all the other stuff that people do in the big city. I can be anywhere. I can be on my boat in six minutes, literally at the marina, boat in the water, six to 10 minutes. I'm screaming across the Gulf of Mexico and having a great time on my boat. I could do that and then still come back to work and have a productive day. Lastly, if you're coming to Key West, don't leave this island without looking me up. You wanna to get together, go have a drink, you wanna bump elbows, whatever, reach out to me. All my contact information is down in the description below or you can go on my website, it's I am selling paradise.com that's i am selling paradise.com i look forward to talking to you if you've got topics about real estate and about key west 
burning questions that you want the answers to and you want me to make a video for you, make sure you leave a comment below with the subject matter and I'll be happy to get on that for you. I think you, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to watch this video. While you're here, stick around for a minute, check out some of my other videos about Key West and I look forward to seeing you soon.